Oh, are we closing our eyes? I think so. Okay. He looks like he has his eyes closed. Okay. <sighs> we can't see if we've got our eyes closed. This is the meditation part of Jerry. <laughs> There were lots and lots of lesbians in Eugene. I quit my job and I moved to Oregon. <laughs> I did what we call the Great Dyke Adventure. It was 1977. We bought a VW bus and then we just took off across the country. I lived with a couple of other lesbians. Just found a home among lesbians in Eugene. We ended up in Eugene because it seemed like a good place to be for a lesbian because there were so many things happening. And so we got to create our own little world. It was exciting times. All these lesbians were here and they were starting all these businesses that you could go to. You'd come to the women's bookstore, Mother Collie's, and you'd find a place to stay or somebody who would show you around or whatever you needed. They had a restaurant here. There was a mechanic and Crescent Construction and the tree planters and a kung fu school. Starflower was a worker-owned and controlled feminist natural food distributing company. Here are these women driving these semis. I mean, hello. It was like a butch dream. It was hard work, but also exhilarating to be strong and just the sweetness of us all doing it together and to have this sisterhood. You could walk into the main house and it was like going through one of those swirling doors and emerge four hours later and wonder what had happened to you. It was a collective of lesbians and they were doing these wonderful things. They were having all these workshops, they were building houses, they were very political. There was always someone to talk to. There was always someone visiting. There was always an interesting story. There was always something going on. Needing that sort of separateness to figure out who we were. The word separatism was thrown around a lot. I just could never be a separatist. That's just not the kind of person I am. And yet I really understood having a safe space for women. One, two, we got two. And this one, they're molting right now, so I'm not getting a lot of eggs. I love sketchbooks. I love drawing in them. There's lots of images of Ginger, although she has yet to ever sit still for five seconds. This says, not everyone is lucky. And this one says, I am not a man. And there's one down here that says, I am not a woman. It isn't your choice. Like in other words, it's not your choice to make me into who I am. What do you mean, what am I? There's nowhere else to go. Do you love God? You have no idea. And then the blanks for me symbolize the people that we've lost along the way to violence. People who just didn't make it because it was too hard. So the title of the piece is called Salvation and Fury. I think it relates to a lot about how I felt as a kid because I always felt different.
The OCA stood for the Oregon Citizens Alliance, and it was a group of people who organized ballot measures against gay rights. Measure 9 was going to change the state constitution of Oregon to say that homosexuality was unnatural, abnormal, wrong, and perverse. Most queer people are not raised with a lot of affirmation of our queerness, and so that negative stuff was getting reinforced. It was bad. Like, if you'd go try to collect petition signatures and people would spit at you. I mean, like, bad, like that. And, you know, hate crimes, actual beatings and stuff. Dyke, D-I-K-E, scratched into Janice's Volkswagen bus and faggot. I said, ooh, smart folks. But, yeah, we, we went through it. The good thing about it is it got us to be organized and got our allies to step up. Harvey Milk was saying at the same time, everybody has to come out of the closet or we won't get anywhere. And not just coming out as queer, but also as an ally. The tide was turning. We went from being a very marginalized community to suddenly, you know, we were the mainstream and they were the weirdos. You know, it's those terrible things that you're reacting against that actually have some good that come out of it. Marriage was never really in my script. I didn't want to be a bride. I didn't see marriage as an end goal in life or an important step along the way. And then political winds were shifting and marriage equality movement was starting. Hell yeah, we're entitled to this. Not that we want it or anything, but you know, you can't exclude us. That's discrimination, that's not okay. Sally was saying for years, you know, in our lifetime, it's gonna be legal and I was thinking, no way, no way, you know? And then all of a sudden it was, and it was like, wow. I woke Sally up and said, it's happened, you know? <laughs> Sally got up and grabbed one of the many um, rainbow flags we have, stark naked, and was dancing around, waving the flag and singing. Didn't ever think that would be possible. Isn't it amazing that it happened? And to have it suddenly happen was such a surprise. And we just thought, well, we've got to do this. There were more lesbian weddings that summer. We were all so excited that we could actually do it. None of it really affected our relationship. You know, I mean, whether we were married or domestic partners, it had more to do with how to present ourselves in the world. You know, it was also a social statement that, yeah, we're married. All right, we'll just go with the classic, Meg Christian. She was a big time woman, the first to come along. The children being female meant to still put the gay rights movement and everything that we've done and the lesbian community that we built is pretty significant. I just hope that those things have an influence on making things better for other communities. I really want the world to be a better place. How much longer do we have and what do we want to do with that time? Enlarging your boundaries outside of your little space, whatever that little space is, white lesbians, you know, <laughs> in Eugene, Oregon is, you know, is my pod, but you know, to get out beyond that. I think this phase of my life is truly about understanding people. But I think the ability to dialogue and the ability to change from those dialogues, to hear each other. The most important thing is love. Okay, I'm on your left. I want to catch up with my sweet potato. To be not in the closet is liberating. And how I wish that would be for everybody, that we would walk into the world and find out that we were the same as everybody else, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, because all these divisions are artificial, you know? They're physical or they're mental or they're national or whatever. We all <laughs> belong to each other.